Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing uh, with another video today. And uh, I want to thank all my subscribers and people that have watched this. It's through your views and stuff. I've been able to take my wife to Whataburger and I've even bought a GoPro. Who knows, who knows what holds for next month? But before I begin, I want to start about this story not related to this at all. And I'm sorry if you get bored by this, but I don't know. I think sometimes you need to talk about some good things that happen. So this morning I went to go work out at the gym um, and... Before you, people think I'm working out just to get bigger. No, it's because my wife um, has a tendency to try to put a pillow over my face at night and I have to somehow fight it off. So I think whenever she's pushing the pillow down, she's saying, stop buying car parts. But with the pillow over my face, I can't hardly hear it. But anyway, um, that's a joke. She really doesn't do that. But uh, anyway, so I went to the gym and I, after the gym, I go to McDonald's because you know I like to eat and it totally goes against working out, but whatever. The person in front of me bought their bought me a meal, so I just got to share that. It was kind of cool. So you know what I did? I bought the person behind me. I'm not saying that to brag, but I thought, well, you know, there's a lot of good stuff that happens in the world that never makes it on any media, and um, not that I necessarily needed a meal, or I don't know if the person behind me did, but I thought it was a good gesture. So um, there's nothing wrong with saying it was a good gesture, and I'm glad someone did it. So there you go. But anyway, let's get started with the day. Today's video is about how you can ruin a set of heads, or what not to do. Now I had a, I was gonna do a whole video today about valve train weight and stuff, but during the week I had a customer bring in a set of heads and he asked me to flow them and he had ruined them. Um, and I'll tell you what he did and how you can avoid it. Now this is not the head that he ruined, but this is a head I've already messed up anyway. It was a, a customer backed out on the project, so I thought, hey, I can use this head to show you what I'm talking about, uh, what not to do, okay? so. To make it real simple, what he did was he made the throat too large. But most of you right now are like, I don't know what you're talking about. Can you explain better? So we'll go through that and I'll show through this head and some other things about what not to do. So anyway, let's go through some terms first. All right. Um, the throat itself is actually right in this area. So if you take from here and you go across, that's the throat area. So let's pretend I made this to like a little hourglass. This right here would be the bowl, which would actually be like going straight across here from the valve guide. That's the bowl. Then we have a throat, and this is called, so this is the convergent and divergent areas. I don't, I'm not trying to overwhelm you with technical stuff, and if I don't include it, it's because I don't want to make this thing too heavy. But anyway, this is, this is really a Venturi effect, and this is what makes the port make power, is using this. So in essence, you have it wide through the bowl, it comes, it gets smaller through the throat, and then expands out as it goes through the chamber. That's pretty much it, kind of like that. Anyway. That's the bowl, this is the throat, okay? This part's very important to making power and doing things right. And if you listen to my last video about coefficient of discharge, we talked about that. But anyway, what this customer had done was he had done something similar to this. So I, I did the same thing on this head just to ruin it. So you have it for the vi video visualization. Um, he had made the throat too large, okay? And you're like, how's that hurt it? Um, let's look at some math real quick. Okay, in a typical valve job, a five angle one, um, you'll have a top cut, then you'll have a seat angle, and you have an undercut, and maybe another undercut, and a third one. Okay, and then the throat's usually right underneath it. But sometimes when we make the throats bigger, we'll start the throat, if they get bigger, they're gonna take up more of the space, and they'll start moving up this undercut, and maybe into this undercut. Rarely do we, tr we try not to get to this one, and uh, because when you do you really hurt flow and you're like so I mean flow is not everything true But you're also making no turn for this and even though um, It sounds like well the holes bigger should be better. It's it's not because the air you've taken out more angles for the air to turn So what the guy had done is he'd made the throat 93.4 percent and this was on a big block head um, Anyway, he asked me to flow it. So let's kind of get an idea. So this is a two-way valve I'm just doing some percent. So you take 208 times 90%, you'd have a diameter of 1.8972. That's what the throat would measure across, diameter was. At 91%, you'd have 1.892, same thing. 93%, no good, it's 1.9344. That's across here. Now, like I just said, what he had done is if you do 90%, it's almost always safe. You hardly ever have an issue. 91% if you're a good porter, no problem. And I'll be honest with you, I go uh, 92 to 92.4 is about the max. And you can get away with it on certain valve jobs. 
So a typical valve job is a 45 degree seat. And because it's a 45 degree seat, the back cut or undercuts will be a different angle that kind of go with the 45. If you go with a steeper seat, say a 50 or 55, the, it goes from like this and it starts turning this way. And because that, you can actually make the throats larger and it still works because it's a nice tuned venturing coming out. You, you cannot do it if you have a 45 seat because there's, it's going like this, the angle is, and you're trying now, so that's the seat angle, and you end up with a throat really large, you're almost like straight on. So it's straight 45. That's not good. You, there's like a minimum that's 15 degrees to help the air turn. And you're far beyond that if you make the throat too large. So on a steeper seat angle, and this may be going over your head, I'm sorry. On a steeper seat angle head, you can get away with a bigger throat. However, I've never done 93%. I've never seen any other head come in here that's 93% that worked. I've seen them come in, but they're not well. Um, and I'll talk about what it did on the flow sh um, chart. I won't show you his, but I'll tell you what it did and um, kind of give you an idea. But anyway, so when you make this throat larger, this area through here is gonna keep growing. Well, as it grows, it's expanding up and you're taking out more of these angles. So less of an angle to turn, no bueno. So if you look at this head, I can kind of show you. I'm gonna turn on my flashlight right quick. Oh, that's really bright, there we go. Okay, so I did. let's show you the right one first. Let's go over to this one right here. This one's got a throw to like 91%. And if you see, and it's really hard because my preview is just not that great. I have a top cut. I've got a seat angle, which is somewhere in here. Bottom cut, undercut, sorry, undercut. And this is the third one that got blended in. Okay? Kind of get an idea of what's going on. It's hard to see, I know, with this. All right, this one, maybe better. So top cut, seat, undercut, and slightly get into undercut. 91%. By the way, this is a 55 degree valve job. So if we look over here, this would be similar to what he had done. Sometimes I think it's too bright and I can't tell because my preview. The GoPro is awesome, but it's preview only shows in like low definition. So you really don't know what you're seeing until you watch it. So in this case, which I've got it, let's go this side. Here's our top still there. This is the seat and that's all that's left of the undercut. All the rest is removed, especially on this side. This would be a good example. So you have your, hopefully you can see it well on the camera. Seat, undercut barely there and right into it. This thing's gonna suck. Um, just from the flow bench standpoint, I'm ignoring the other stuff. Just from a flow bench standpoint, when you cut out those angles, what you'll, well, here's what will happen on the flow bench and it's almost all of the time. What will happen is, it will flow really, really good at say 900 and one inch of valve lift. It will flow really, really crappy at four, sorry, one, which I don't care, two, bad, three, bad, four, horrible, which is, remember I care about four, six, and one. 400 number, it usually sucks. Just to give you an idea, the head that the guy had brought in was a big block Chevy head, 360 cc's, 2.3 intake valve, at 400, it flowed 242. I have never seen a big block head come in that flowed that low at 400, ever. That's, that's miserable. That's to give you an idea, um, actually this one. This one is a uh, circle track head. It's one of those EQ heads. I didn't port this. This one flows 242. It's a little 202 valve at 400 lift. So that big old valve, we're talking about huge, huge port, 242 because he had killed everything by taking out those angles, okay? So that's one thing you for sure don't wanna mess up. So if you're like, what do I, what's this whole video about? Don't make the throat too large. I, that's where everybody seems to go right off. The throat helps, yes, but if you make it too large, you ruin the head pretty much. Now, some people are machinists and they machine it badly and ruin it. So I wanna get to that real quick. Um, this is one of our um, custom cutters which hopefully this, I'm gonna hold it so you can see it better. I'll turn it this way. They have five angles there and you can kind of see them as I flash them. So you have a top, which I'm not, I can't hold it and do both things at once. Plus it'd be really hard to see, but you've got a top cut seat and then one, two, three undercuts. Okay. This is what I use. 
And what I do is, this one's got it on there. This is the cutter body, so you can see what it's on. All right, get me? When you put them on there, it will cut, and it will cut there, and you'll get your angles in. From there, you can pour it and make it your, um, your throat and everything else go together. But there is something called a bowl hog. I don't own one, but this is a picture of what it kind of looks like, like that. They bolt right into here. A lot of machinists do this, especially on circle track stuff. And what they'll do is they will take this bull hog, they'll put it on here, and they'll take this, their deal, and they'll come down, and they'll just start cutting away at these angles. They'll do the same thing, except for they're not using a the grinder, they're using an actual um, tool, and they will literally cut away. They'll keep cutting down, move it out, cut down, cut down, cut down, until they're same thing as pretty much this is, except for it's all machined. And they're like, man, I really helped your head and made it flow. It's got better there. It's going to flow more. They don't even have flow bench. But they're like, it's going to flow better. It's going to run better. And they hurt the head. They just assaulted the head. Um, I see a lot on the surf track stuff like with these where they say you can't, no porting allowed. So you have a guy who will come in and he'll bring, this head's really crappy, but, um, these are the angles already in, and he'll take the bowl, the bowl cutter, or the bowl hog, and it'll literally cut all this out, except for you'll have a seen angle bowl hog. And you pretty much just did the same thing that this did. You made the throat really large. And this is even worse here, because in some heads like these, what you wanna have is you wanna have, th this is like small heads. There's hardly any bowl. The bowl is maybe a slightly percent bigger than the throat across here. But if you make this bigger, so you bull hog, so now your throat's way out here. Your restriction's now up here, or here in the port. Weird, and the head responds weird. Also, you've killed flow on the, um, because the low lift flow stuff's gonna suck, and you, you've pretty much ruined the head. Now, you can use bull hogs properly by doing it this way. So if I have it here, at the bottom of my cut, whatever my seat angle is, the bottom is, and I've got materials, especially in stock heads, and I've got material sticking out. You can use the bull hog just to hit the bottom of your angle. Maybe the second undercut, that's it. Don't go into the one right below the seat angle. Because when you do that, you made the throat too large, you've killed all the angles, it's not going to flow properly, and you've destroyed your head. Um, in a way. So, there's that. Um, hopefully that gets a better idea. So, for a lot of you don't have bull hogs, or don't have access to a machine shop, but there's several in the old school people and they're like, I've been doing it for 30 years and it works. You might've been doing it 30 years, but you're doing it wrong for all 30 of them. So um, just an idea. And by the way, these are my opinions. You can take it for whatever you want, but I've, I've seen enough to know what it does. Now, what happens if you have a head that's like that? I mean, can it be fixed? What, what do you do? Do you just throw the head away? Well, there's really two ways in which you can fix it. So in this case, I intentionally made it too big. So, is it ruined? In a way, there's two things you can do. One, what you can do is you could try to install a larger valve, if there's room. So, if I put a larger valve in, and there's room on the seat, in other words, there's enough material here for the, for the larger valve to go in. Um, so this one's already cut for 2125. There is no more room. Because if you look, right there's a seat where it's sitting. The seat can't go any larger. So if I put like say a 215 or 214 valve, I'm out of the seat, I'm into aluminum. You can't do that. That's no bueno, can't do. So you can't do that. But in some heads, like that big block head he had that the customer brought in, it was a 2300. The seat ring's big enough to accept a 2350. If he cuts it out to a larger valve job, what'll happen is these angles will start coming in because that throat might've been really big for a 2300. But on a 2350, the angles will start being back out here because your seat angle is way out here, and that might fix it. But in his case, I think even at 93.4 is what he had. If he do a 2350, his throat's still really large, um, but at least it would get more angles. It would help the head, yes, if the bore also could handle it, because that's another thing. If I just go to a larger bore, you can get shrouding on this side, or it might actually come in contact. So not always the case that it can do that. But if he could run the 2350 valve because he had a bigger bore, that might help it and could alleviate it. The second way in which you can actually fix it is way more costly and 
Um, most people don't do it. It's simple. Simple, but not easy. One, remove the seat. And since these are small block Chevys, they're usually interlinking. Remove that seat. Um, have someone come weld up the this whole area here where the register is and all the way underneath it, probably down to about here and up to here. Cut in and uh, put in a new seat, proper valve job to the right height, and then port back to where you'd be 91%. Fixed. The catch is that's usually pretty expensive because we're talking about replacing all 16 seats, the welding, the new valve job, the new port work, and everything else. So it can be fixed, but man, it'd be costly. At that point, it's usually just new head and start all over. So anyway, I hope that helps you with some of the stuff what not to do. So the point of today's lesson is do not make the throat too large. If you're a beginner, 90% of the valve diameter, safe. If you're getting better and you could do 91%, you're okay. If you're really experienced, of course, you can go higher, but that's also dependent on the seat angles itself. And 92% on a 45 degree valve job would be very difficult. Um, on a 50 degree, it's not that big of a deal. On a 55, it's really not that big of a deal. But hopefully that gives you some insight on what not to do. Do not port the throat too large. Um, but let me real quick, because someone had asked you about the exhaust. On the exhaust, you actually can make it bigger because this is going to be weird. You're like, wait, you said all the way, don't make the throat too large. Yeah, on the intake. The exhaust is kind of a different deal. On the flow bench, you can kill low lift flow and it'll make more power. Because if I make the throat larger on the exhaust, the area is better. There's more pressure to get it out. And you're like, well, wait a minute. Won't it flow less at four and six and one? And then the numbers you care most about? Yes, on the intake. The exhaust side of things, it's kind of a different world altogether. We want the exhaust out. And if you make the throat too large, you know, like, well, you lose four, you know, numbers at 400 and so on. That sounds horrible, except for guess what? It flows even worse in reverse. So in other words, exhaust is going out, but there's a reverse pulse that flows back sometimes. If I make it um, where it flows a lot of exhaust out and a lot of pressure, which the exhaust is under, but then it's really hard for it to come back through, that's a win. So having the throat too large on the exhaust is not a big deal. On the intake, it's a killer. So... Hopefully that answers some questions. Thanks for watching and you guys take care.